So our next case is about iTunes. Okay. So Apple is selling a lot of things, MP3 apps and many other things. And we also notice that for MP3 and apps, Apple is doing different things. All right. So for MP3 in particular, Apple basically purchase authorization from uh, studios, from publishers. And then they have a lot of MP3. They set prices for each MP3. Okay, $39, $29, something like that. And then sell to consumers. So Apple decides the price for MP3. On the contrary, for apps, Apple simply talks to the app developers, saying that, okay, there is a marketplace. If you want to sell your apps, come here, set your own price, and I'm going to charge you 30% as of your revenue. So app developers, they have the right or have the chance to decide their own price facing consumers. All right. So in that sense, we should say that for which product does Apple adapt the platform strategy? I guess you would also agree. It looks like the app. Apple simply let app developers communicate with consumers and then make transactions and take some revenues from them. On the other hand, for MP3, it's more like a merchant model. So now we want to ask, why is that? Why we want to sell MP3 as a merchant, but we want to sell apps as a platform? That's our question. Okay, so there are certainly many different reasons. So I'm going to again uh, allow you five seconds. You may pause the video for a while to think about it before I talk more. Okay, so let me uh, share my thoughts with you. So certainly there must be something different between the products so that they are something different regarding the company's behavior or strategies. Okay, so what are them? Well, if you think about the product characteristics, so first, MP3 seems to be a mature product. Whenever you purchase an MP3, there is nothing else you need from the seller. On the other hand, for apps, you do need some bug fixing, right? You do need some maintenance. You do need some upgrades. So that means you need after sales service, okay? After sales, uh, after sales service. For one product app, you do need after sales service. But for the other product, MP3, you don't. So if that's the case, if you are the seller for app, consumers is going to claim, uh, to reach you, to approach you regarding bug fixing, updates, and so on and so on. If that's the case, Apple is really having no capacity to sell all those million apps by themselves, right? Apple knows that they are after sales service. And Apple knows that this company itself is not able to have a team, a, such a huge team, to provide all those after services for apps. So Apple says, okay, app developers, you sell to consumers. You provide the after sales service. Okay, that can be one reason. They are different because one needs to create after sales service, the other one does not. Okay, so that's one thing. Maybe you also think about another thing. Suppose that you are Apple. Is it easier for you to evaluate the value of an MP3 or an app? Probably it's the MP3. Okay, for each MP3, you first look at who is the singer. If it's Maria Carey, Michael Jackson, you know it's going to be somewhat popular. If the singer is unfamous, hmm then it's not going to be so popular. Typically, uh, you may have one or two persons listening to the MP3 and make some decisions. You are not always correct, but you are not. Know, uh, you still know something. Uh, so that's about music. That's about MP3. It's not so difficult to do the valuation. But if you are talking about apps, uh, whether this is written by a big company or a small company, uh, doesn't matter. 
and it's very difficult for you to check whether there is a bug, whether the app is of high quality, whether the app is really useful, whether the app is going to be a hit. So valuation for app would be hard if you are Apple, if you are not a developer. So what does that mean? That means if you are Apple, it's not very easy to do effective pricing for app because you don't know whether it's going to be a hard sales. You don't know whether it's of high quality. For MP3, pricing is much easier. So regarding valuation difficulty, okay? Because for apps, the valuation difficulty is higher, so it's hard to do effective pricing. So, okay, maybe the best way is to let app developers price by themselves. Okay, that can be the second reason. Maybe we also have the last one. What's that? Well, it's about the number of suppliers. So for MP3, music, most of the products are supplied by just a few major suppliers. Warner Music, uh, AVEX, whatever, whatever, and whatever. Those big companies can supply 80% or 90% of the products. Okay? So when you want to negotiate with about prices or to um, buy authorization or to try to bargain on whatever, the number of suppliers is limited for MP3. But for apps, you do see a lot of apps developed by individuals, okay? And maybe millions of individuals, millions of small companies. So it's going to be impossible if you want to do bargaining or price negotiation with each of them one by one. If you want to do that kind of contracting, all you can do is to set up a single contract, 30%, and then talk to everybody saying that if you are agreeing with if you agree with this 30% commission fee, do it, otherwise go away. The number of supplier is just so different, so that regarding apps, you have no choice. Maybe a marketplace is just the best idea. So in my opinion, regarding pricing itself, if you are going to sell one product on your website and suppose you are able to do pricing effectively, efficiently, then you will want to do that. You will give up this pricing chance, pricing right, only if you are forced to do that. For apps, it's just too difficult, too difficult, too difficult, so that you create a marketplace instead of a merchant for apps. Uh, that's my opinion. So. These are some things to keep in mind when you are thinking about whether you want to price these products or let those developers do the pricing.